Zeno Abba Zeno, the disciple of Blessed Silvanus, said, Do not live in a famous place, do not settle close to a man with a great name, and do not lay foundations for building yourself a cell one day. It was said of Abba Zeno that from the outset he never wished to receive anything from anyone at all. Those who brought him something came away hurt that he had not accepted anything. Others came to him wanting to receive some token from a great old man, and he had nothing to give them, so they too came away hurt. The old man said, What shall I do? Since those who bring things are hurt just as much as those who wish to receive something. I know what seems right to me. When someone brings me something, I will accept it, and I will give it to anyone who asks me for something. So he did that, and was at peace and satisfied every one. An Egyptian brother came to see Abazino in Syria, and accused himself to the old man about his temptations. Filled with admiration, Zeno said, The Egyptians hide the virtues they possess, and ceaselessly accuse themselves of faults they do not have, while the Syrians and Greeks pretend to have virtues they do not have, and hide the faults of which they are guilty. Some brothers came to see him and asked him, What does this saying in the book of Job mean? Heaven is not pure in his presence. The old man replied, The brothers have passed over their sins, and inquired about heavenly things. This is the interpretation of this saying. God alone is pure, therefore, he said, Heaven is not pure. It was said of Abazino that when he was living in Scites, he came out of his cell by night, going in the direction of the marshes. He spent three days and three nights wandering at random. At last, tired out, his strength failing him, he fell down as though he were dying. Behold, a little child stood before him with bread and a jar of water and said to him, Get up and eat. He stood up and prayed, thinking that it was a delusion. The other said to him, You have done well. And he prayed a second and then a third time. The child again said, you have done well. Then the old man stood up, took some food, and ate. The child said to him, As far as you have walked, so far are you from your cell. So then, get up and follow me. Immediately he found himself in his cell. So the old man said to the child, Enter and let us pray. But when the old man went inside, the other vanished. Another time the same Abazino was walking in Palestine, and he was tired. He sat down near a cucumber plant to eat, and he said to himself, Take a cucumber and eat it, truly it is only a little thing. But he answered himself, Thieves are taken away to punishment. Examine yourself, therefore, to see if you can bear punishment. He got up and stood in the sun for five days. When he was quite burnt, he said, you cannot bear punishment. And he said to his thoughts, Since you cannot bear punishment, do not steal, and do not eat. Abazino said, If a man wants God to hear his prayer quickly, then before he prays for anything else, even his own soul, when he stands and stretches out his hands towards God, he must pray with all his heart for his enemies. Through this action God will hear everything that he asks. In a village there was said to be a man who fasted to such a degree that he was called the faster. Abba Zeno had heard of him and sent for him. The other came gladly. They prayed and sat down. The old man began to work in silence. Since he could not succeed in talking to him, the faster began to get bored. So he said to the old man, Pray for me, Abba, for I want to go. The old man said to him, Why? The other replied, Because my heart is as if it were on fire, and I do not know what is the matter with it. For truly, when I was in the village, and I fasted until the evening, 
Nothing like this happened to me. The old man said, In the village you fed yourself through your ears. But go away, and from now on eat at the ninth hour, and whatever you do, do it secretly. As soon as he had begun to act on this advice, the faster found it difficult to wait until the ninth hour. And those who knew him said, The faster is possessed by the devil. So he went to tell all this to the old man who said to him, This way is according to God. Zacharias Abba Macarius said to Abba Zacharias, Tell me, what is the work of a monk? He said to him, How is it that you are asking me, father? Abba Macarius said, Zacharias, my child, you inspire me with confidence. It is God who urges me to ask you. Then Zacharias said to him, Father, in my opinion, he is a monk who does violence to himself in everything. Going to draw water one day, Abba Moses found Abba Zacharias praying beside the well, and the spear of God rested above him. One day Abba Moses said to Brother Zacharias, Tell me what I ought to do. At these words the latter threw himself on the ground at the old man's feet and said, Are you asking me, father? The old man said to him, Believe me, Zacharias, my son, I have seen the Holy Spirit descending upon you, and since then I am constrained to ask you. Then Zacharias drew his hood off his head, put it under his feet, and trampled on it, saying, The man who does not let himself be treated thus cannot be a monk. While he was sitting one day in Scites, Abba Zacharias had a vision. He went to tell his father, Carrion, about it. The old man, who was an ascetic, did not understand this matter. He got up and beat him soundly, saying that it came from the demons. But Zacharias went on thinking about it, and he went by night to Abba Pimin, to tell the matter to him, and how his heart burned within him. Then the old man, seeing that this came from God, said to him, Go to such and such an old man, and whatever he tells you to do, do it. Zacharias went to the old man, and even before he could ask anything, he forestalled him, telling him everything that had happened, and saying that this vision came from God. But go, said he, and submit yourself to your father. Abba Pimin said that Abba Moses asked Abba Zacharias, who was at the point of death, What do you see? He said, Is it not better to hold my peace, father? And he said, Yes, it is better to hold your peace, my child. At the hour of his death, Abba Isidore, who was sitting there, looked towards heaven and said, Rejoice, Abba Zacharias, my son, because the doors of the kingdom of heaven are opened to you. Isaiah Abba Isaiah said, Nothing is so useful to the beginner as insults. The beginner who bears insults is like a tree that is watered every day. He also said to those who are making a good beginning by putting themselves under the direction of the Holy Fathers, As with purple dye, the first coloring is never lost, and Just as young shoots are easily trained back and bent, so it is with beginners who live in submission. He also said, A beginner who goes from one monastery to another is like an animal who jumps this way and that for fear of the halter. He also said that when there was an agape and the brethren were eating in the church and talking to one another, the priests of Pelusia reprimanded them in these words, Brethren, be quiet, for I have seen a brother eating with you and drinking as many cups as you, and his prayer is ascending to the presence of God like fire. It was said of Abba Isaiah that one day he took a branch and went to the threshing floor to thresh, and said to the owner, Give me some wheat. The latter replied, Have you brought in the harvest, my father? He said, No. The owner said to him, 
How then can you expect to be given wheat if you have not harvested? Then the old man said to him, So then, if someone does not work, he does not receive wages? The owner replied, No. At that the old man went away. Seeing what he had done, the brethren bowed before him, asking him to tell them why he had acted thus. The old man said to them, I did this as an example. Whoever has not worked will not receive a reward from God. The same Ab Isaiah called one of the brethren, washed his feet, put a handful of lentils into the pot, and brought them to him as soon as they had boiled. The brother said to him, They are not cooked, Abba. The old man replied, Is it not enough simply to have seen the fire? That alone is a great consolation. He also said, When God wishes to take pity on a soul, and it rebels, not bearing anything and doing its own will, then he allows it to suffer that which it does not want, in order that it may seek him again. He also said, When someone wishes to render evil for evil, he can injure his brother's soul even by a single nod of the head. The same Ab Isaiah, when someone asked him what avarice was, replied, Not to believe that God cares for you, to despair of the promises of God, and to love boasting. He was also asked what calumny is, and he replied, It is ignorance of the glory of God, and hatred of one's neighbor. He was also asked what anger is, and he replied, Quarreling, lying, and ignorance. Elias Abba Elias said, For my part, I fear three things, the moment when my soul will leave my body, and when I shall appear before God, and when the sentence will be given against me. The old men said of Abba Gathon to Abba Elias in Egypt, He is a good Abba. The old man answered them, In comparison with his own generation, he is good. They said to him, And what is he in comparison with the ancients? He gave them this answer, I have said to you that in comparison with his generation, he is good. But as to that of the ancients, in Sketes I have seen a man who, like Joshua the son of Nun, could make the sun stand still in the heavens. At these words they were astounded and gave glory to God. Abba Elias the minister said, What can sin do where there is penitence? And of what use is love where there is pride? Abba Elias said, I saw someone who was carrying a skin of wine on his arm, and in order to make the demons blush, for it was a fantasy. I said to the brother, of your charity, take off your cloak. He took off his cloak, and was not found to be carrying anything. I say that, so that you may not believe even that which you see or hear. Even more, observe your thoughts, and beware of what you have in your heart and your spirit, knowing that the demons put ideas into you, so as to corrupt your soul, by making it think of that which is not right in order to turn your spirit from the consideration of your sins and of God. He also said, Men turn their minds either to their sins, or to Jesus, or to men. He also said, If the spirit does not sing with the body, labor is in vain. Whoever loves tribulation will obtain joy and peace later on. He also said, an old man was living in a temple, and the demons came to say to him, Leave this place which belongs to us. And the old man said, No place belongs to you. Then they began to scatter his palm leaves about, one by one, and the old man went on gathering them together with perseverance. A little later the devil took his hand and pulled him to the door. When the old man reached the door, he seized the lintel with the other hand, crying out, Jesus, save me. Immediately the devil fled away. 
Then the old man began to weep. Then the Lord said to him, Why are you weeping? And the old man said, Because the devils have dared to seize a man and treat him like this. The Lord said to him, You had been careless. As soon as you turned to me again, you see, I was beside you. I say this because it is necessary to take great pains, and anyone who does not do so cannot come to his God, for he himself was crucified for our sake. A brother who followed the life of stillness in the monastery of the cave of Abba Saba came to Abba Elias and said to him, Abba, give me a way of life. The old man said to the brother, In the days of our predecessors they took great care about these three virtues, poverty, obedience, and fasting. But among monks nowadays, avarice, self-confidence, and great greed have taken charge. Choose whichever you want most. Heraclides A brother who was attacked by the devil unburdened himself to Abba Heraclides. He told him the following in order to comfort him. An old man had a disciple who for many years had obeyed him in everything. Now one day, when he was attacked by the devil, he made a prostration before the old man, saying, Let me become a monk on my own. The old man replied, Survey the district and we will build a cell for you. So they found a place a mile away. They went there and built the cell. The old man said to the brother, What I tell you, do it. Each time you are afflicted, eat, drink, sleep, only do not come out of your cell until Saturday, then come to see me. The brother spent two days according to these orders, but the third day, a prey to axity, he said to himself, Why did the old man arrange that for me? Standing up he sang many psalms, and after sunset he ate. He went to lie down on his mat to sleep, but he saw an Ethiopian lying there who gnashed his teeth at him. Driven by fear, he ran to the old man, knocked on his door, and said, Abba, have pity on me, open the door. The old man, seeing he had not obeyed his instruction, did not open until morning, very early. Then he opened it, and found him outside, imploring him to help him. Then, full of pity, he made him come inside. The other said, Father, I need you. On my bed I saw a black Ethiopian as I was going to sleep. The old man replied, You suffered that because you did not keep my instructions. Then, according to his capacity, he taught him the discipline of the solitary life, and in a short time he became a good monk. Theodore of Fermi Abba Theodore of Fermi had acquired three good books. He came to Abba Macarius and said to him, I have three excellent books from which I derive profit. The brethren also make use of them and derive profit from them. Tell me what I ought to do, keep them for my use and that of the brethren, or sell them and give the money to the poor. The old man answered him in this way, Your actions are good, but it is best of all to possess nothing. Hearing that, he went and sold his books and gave the money for them to the poor. A brother lived in the cells, and in his solitude he was troubled. He went to tell Abba Theodore of Fermi about it. The old man said to him, Go, be more humble in your aspirations. Place yourself under obedience, and live with others. Later he came back to the old man and said, I do not find any peace with others. The old man said to him, If you are not at peace either alone or with others, why have you become a monk? Is it not to suffer trials? Tell me how many years you have worn the habit. He replied, For eight years. Then the old man said to him, I have worn the habit seventy years, and on no day have I found peace. Do you expect to obtain peace in eight years? At these words the brother went away strengthened. A brother came to Abba Theodore and spent three days begging him to say a word to him without getting any reply. So he went away grieved. Then the old man's disciple said to him, 
Abba, why did you not say a word to him? See, he has gone away grieved. The old man said to him, I did not speak to him, for he is a trafficker who seeks to glorify himself through the words of others. He also said, If you are friendly with someone who happens to fall into temptations of fornication, offer him your hand, if you can, and deliver him from it. But if he falls into heresy, and you cannot persuade him to turn from it, separate yourself quickly from him, in case, if you delay, you too may be dragged down with him into the pit. It was said of Abba Theodore of Fermi that the three things he held to be fundamental were poverty, asceticism, flight from men. One day Abba Theodore was entertaining himself with the brethren. While they were eating, they drank their cups with respect, but in silence, without even saying pardon. So Abba Theodore said, The monks have lost their manners and do not say pardon. A brother questioned him, saying, Abba, would you approve of my not eating bread for several days? The old man said to him, You do well, I have done the same. The brother said, I mean to take my chickpeas to the bakery and have them made into flour. The old man replied, If you are going to the bakery, why not make the flour into bread? What need is there to go out twice? One of the old men came to Abba Theodore and said to him, Look how such and such a brother has returned to the world. The old man said to him, Does that surprise you? No, rather be astonished when you hear that someone has been able to escape the jaws of the enemy. A brother came to Abba Theodore and began to converse with him about things which he had never yet put into practice. So the old man said to him, You have not yet found a ship, nor put your cargo aboard it, and before you have sailed you have already arrived at the city. Do the work first, then you will have the speed you are making now. The same Abba came one day to see Abba John, a eunuch from birth, and during their conversation he said to him, When I was at Skeetes, the works of the soul were our work, and we considered manual work to be subordinate. Now the work of the soul has become subordinate, and what was secondary is the chief work. A brother questioned him, saying, What is the work of the soul, which we now consider to be subordinate? And what is that which was subordinate, and which we now consider to be our chief work? The old man said, Everything you do as a commandment of God is the work of the soul. But to work and to gather goods together for a personal motive ought to be held as subordinate. Then the brother said, Explain this matter to me. So the old man said, Suppose you hear it said that I am ill and you ought to visit me. You say to yourself, Shall I leave my work and go now? I had better finish my work than go. Then another idea comes along and perhaps you never go or again. Another brother says to you, Lend me a hand, brother. And you say, Shall I leave my own work and go and work with him? If you do not go, you are disregarding the commandment of God, which is the work of the soul, and doing the work of your hands, which is subordinate. Abba Theodore of Fermi said, The man who remains standing when he repents has not kept the commandment. He also said, There is no other virtue than that of not being scornful. He also said, The man who has learnt the sweetness of the cell flees from his neighbor, but not as though he despised him. He also said, If I do not cut myself off from these feelings of compassion, they will not let me be a monk. He also said, In these days many take their rest before God gives it them. He also said, do not sleep in a place where there is a woman. A brother said to Abba Theodore, I wish to fulfill the commandments. The old man said to him that Abba Theonus had said to him, I want to fill my spirit with God. Taking some flour to the bakery, he had made loaves which he gave to the poor who asked him for them. Others asked for more, and he gave them the baskets. Then the cloak he was wearing, 
and he came back to his cell with his loins girded with his cape. Afterwards, he took himself to task telling himself that he had still not fulfilled the commandment of God. Once when Abba Joseph was ill, he sent someone to say to Abba Theodore, Come here, that I may see you before I leave the body. It was the middle of the week, and he did not go, but sent to say to him, If you wait until Saturday, I shall come, but if you depart, we will see one another in the world to come. A brother said to Abba Theodore, Speak a word to me, for I am perishing. And sorrowfully he said to him, I am myself in danger, so what can I say to you? A brother came to see Abba Theodore to learn weaving from him. He took a rope with him. The old man said to him, Go and come back early tomorrow. Getting up, the old man steeped the rope and prepared what was necessary, saying, Work in such and such a way, and he left him. Then he went back to his cell and sat down. When the time came, he gave the brother something to eat and sent him away. The brother returned in the small hours, and the old man said to him, Pick up your rope and take it away, for you have come to cast me into temptation and trouble. So he did not let him come in any more. Abba Theodore's disciples said, Someone came today to sell some onions, and he filled a basin with them for me. The old man said, Fill one with wheat and give it to him. There were two heaps of wheat, one of good wheat, the other of unsorted wheat. He filled him a basin of the unsorted wheat. Then the old man looked at me with anger and sorrow, and from fear I fell down on the ground and broke the basin. When I made a prostration before him, the old man said, Get up, it is not your fault but mine, because of what I said to you. Then he went and filled his lap with good wheat, and gave it to the tradesmen with the onions. One day Abba Theodore went to draw water with a brother. The brother, going ahead, saw a dragon in the lake. The old man said to him, Go and walk on his head. But he was afraid and did not go. The old man went. The beast saw him and fled away into the desert, as if it was ashamed. Abba Theodore was asked, If there was a sudden catastrophe, would you be frightened, Abba? The old man replied, Even if the heavens and the earth were to collide, Theodore would not be frightened. He had prayed God to take away fear from him, and it was because of this that he was questioned. It was said about him that, though he was made a deacon at Scythes, he refused to exercise the office, and fled to many places from it. Each time the old men brought him back to Scythes, saying, Do not leave your diaconate. Abba Theodore said to them, Let me pray God that he may tell me for certain whether I ought to take part in the liturgy. Then he prayed God in this manner, If it is your will that I should stand in this place, make me certain of it. Then appeared to him a column of fire, reaching from earth to heaven, and a voice said to him, If you can become like this pillar, go, be a deacon. On hearing this, he decided never to accept the office. When he went to church, the brethren bowed before him, saying, If you do not wish to be deacon, at least hold the chalice. But he refused, saying, If you do not leave me alone, I shall leave this place. So they left him in peace. It was said of him that when Scythes was laid waste, he went to live in Fermi. When he grew old, he was ill. So he was brought food. Whatever the first one brought him, he gave it to the second, and so on. What he received from the first, he offered to the next. When the time to eat came, he ate what the one who came then brought him. It was said of Abba Theodore that when he settled down at Scythes, a demon came to him, wanting to enter his cell. But he bound him to the outside of his cell. Once more another demon tried to enter, and he bound him too. A third demon came as well, and, finding outside the other two bound, he said to them, Why are you standing outside like this? They said to him, He is sitting inside and will not let us enter. So the demon tried to enter by force. The old man bound him too. Fearing the prayers of the old man, 
they begged him, saying, Let us go. And the old man said to them, Go away. Then they went off covered with confusion. One of the fathers told this about Abba Theodore of Fermi. One evening I came to him and found him wearing a torn habit, his chest bare, and his cowl hanging in front of it. Now it happened that a great man came to see him. When he had knocked, the old man went to open the door, and having met him, sat down at the door to talk with him. Then I took one side of his cape and covered his shoulders with it. But the old man put out his hand and snatched it off. When the great man had gone, I said to him, Abba, why did you do that? This man came to be edified. Perhaps he will be shocked. Then the old man said to me, What do you mean, Abba? Are we still the slaves of men? We did what was necessary. The rest is superfluous. He who wishes to be edified, let him be edified. He who wishes to be shocked, let him be shocked. As for me, I meet people as they find me. Then he said to his disciple, If someone comes to see me, do not say anything out of human respect. But if I am eating, say to him, He is eating. And if I am sleeping, say to him, He is sleeping. Three thieves came to him one day, and while the first two held him, the third took away his property. When he had taken the books, he wanted to take the habit as well. So he said to them, Leave that. But they did not agree. So, fighting with his hands, he pushed them both away. Seeing this, they were frightened. Then the old man said to them, Do not fear. Divide these things into four parts. Take three and leave one. So they did this, and in his part he got the habit which he used for the synaxis.